This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're a blogger, artist, or merchant in need of an online presence, Squarespace has all the website building, marketing, and analytics tools you'll need to build a beautiful website and grow your brand. <coughs> Hi, my name is Kira, and I'm deathly afraid of the ocean. Lion's mane jellyfish, seven foot diameter, 120 foot long tentacles. No thanks. Sharks that look like this, and this, and this. <laughs> How many teeth do you even need? Big, deep, unexplored trench, biggest trench on earth. I just, anything could be down there. Today we're doing art therapy because I'm turning sea creatures that scare me into pirates. Giant squid, don't care for that. Fun, eccentric Disney parkour pirates, love those. Where is that car alarm coming from? That's better. So the creatures I'll be playing around with today are our friend, the lion's mane jellyfish, the Japanese spider crab, the saw shark, and finally her debut film says it all, the anglerfish. So my Pinterest boards are comprised of, of course, mostly pirates. Designs from Pirates of the Caribbean, Assassin's Creed, Our Flag Means Death, as well as some good concept art. But I really want to bring the element of each sea creature to the forefront of the design, which is kind of the tricky part because I really want them to immediately read as both sea creature and pirate, which can be a little Little difficult because in some ways it's like opposite vibes. So I assembled a lot of references on each of their boards of clothing and garments and styles that would fit both pirate core and the general vibe of the creature they're based on. And I also kind of want to conceptualize them as being sirens for sailors. Like the reason they're so intertwined with the creature they're based on is they became too greedy in their pursuit of treasure and they owe the sea a debt and they have to repay that debt with souls. Not really a new concept. It's kind of the premise of Pirates of the Caribbean too. But I think it adds a fun story based layer to this exercise. So now let's face my oceanic fears and let's get designing. So as usual, I began my design process with some thumbnails of my characters to figure out the direction I want to go in with these designs. This really helps me to figure out the general vibe, play around with shapes and color palette, and try to make my designs look nice as a group. And a few of these, especially the jellyfish and spider crab, were pretty difficult to pin down. It was hard to find clothing inspo that had echoes of sea creatures in it that also felt piratey, and I spent a lot of time just trying to come up with ideas that would balance the two sides of the prompt. So I basically took these thumbnails up to a point I thought I could work with just to get the general concept down. And from there, I went right into the actual design process. If you have any interest in illustrating and designing characters like me, you need a place to put that artwork on display. So allow me to tell you a bit about this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace offers dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates that allow you to customize your website however you want. Not only is it quick and easy to drop in your pieces and have your photos automatically arranged with tools like automatic image scaling. Squarespace also gives you lots of control over features like text colors and website pages that enhance your brand. I am personally a maximalist, if you haven't noticed already, so I prefer to have lots of things going on on my site all the time, which is why I like a lot of background images and galleries, which are easily achievable with image, video, and social blocks. If I want to showcase bits of my Instagram gallery alongside my portfolio, I can use social blocks to link my social medias to my Squarespace site and feature recent social media posts on my page. I can also use those aforementioned video blocks so that people can easily find videos I'm highlighting like my sketchbook tours. But if you fall on the more minimalist side, you could also go for a clean, pre-built layout from one of Squarespace's beautiful templates that make the site building process even more streamlined. And last, but not least, many of us artists like to sell our work on prints and merchandise, and for that, Squarespace has a fantastic e-commerce platform which you can link to a print-on-demand service like the one I use for an even more effortless selling experience. So if you want to showcase your beautiful artwork and character designs on a website built by you, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video, now let's get into it. So we're starting off with the lion's mane jellyfish, which was actually the last one I drew in this batch because it was giving me the most trouble, but I also think it ended up being the one that I like the most in the end. She turned out, at least to me, actually feeling like a real character, so that's one of the reasons I ended up being so happy happy with her, but anyways. As you could probably see in the thumbnail section, I pretty quickly committed to this weird floral cloak that was heavily inspired by this one that I found on Pinterest. I just love the silhouette of it. It has so much presence. Like this screams to me, I am a ship captain. It makes for a really bold silhouette, but then also has a lot of strong feminine energy to it. And the added benefit of course, is that it kind of looks like jellyfish tentacles, like the texture of it. I don't know if those are tentacles on a jellyfish, but you know what I mean. So this was 
was a super strong starting point for this design, but then from there, it's like, what does the rest of the clothing look like? Because then I'm covering up so much of my character and obscuring a lot of the silhouette with this giant cloak. And with this decision, I also ran into that same issue of trying to balance like key features of the creature that I'm trying to translate into a character with traditional pirate aesthetics. Because I really was trying to go for readability with these designs. So I ended up trying a couple of different things with the clothing that she wears underneath that cloak. For one, I really liked these dresses in terms of silhouette and the type of fabric and mainly the color because it looked a lot like some of the colors that I was seeing on Lion's Mane Jellyfish. So I tried to take some of those ideas and then adapt it into a little bodice, a little jacket, something along those lines. But for the most part, it really wasn't doing it for me. But it just wasn't feeling piratey enough. It was still serving Magical Girl or just trying to turn a jellyfish into a person. So I tried like a variety of necklines and sleeves and colors and all this stuff and it just really wasn't working for me but the breakthrough finally came whenever I decided to just crop the cloak and make it more of a capelet. So whenever I did that it led to the idea of what if I make her a little jumpsuit that has like tentacle fringe hanging off the back of it and from there I was like okay fringe. Fringe kind of reminds me of like cowboy aesthetics which somehow oddly fit in with the whole pirate core thing too. I feel like there's a good bit of overlap lap there. So from there my brain went, aha, assless chaps. And you know what? They're gonna have fringe on them too. <laughs> and obviously the whole bunny suit with assless chaps is definitely a sexier choice, but I am kind of going for a siren edge with these designs. I definitely want them to be sexy and alluring because, you know, they gotta get souls somehow. So from here, like I said, things really started to come together. At this point, somehow I jumped from pirate to cowboy to then Rococo era socialite because whenever I got into the coloring stage and the stage of adding a lot of the accessories and little details, I found that the thing that brought the design together the most was adding a lot of pastel colors and little delicate details like feathers and pearls and a lot of ruffles. I gave her a high standing collar and a cravat. I mean, Rococo is definitely not a reach because piracy saw its heyday in like the mid 18th century, but I think it's fun to bring so many lavish details and pastel colors into the design for a pirate because it's just not what we stereotypically think of even though this is kind of how the aristocracy was dressing at the time. It's definitely giving Steed Bonnet but it fits great for this character too because of the coloration of the lion's mane jellyfish and also just bringing that aspect of mermaid core into it too. I think that fits very well for a lot of these designs since I'm also trying to play up the angle of them being sirens. So to finish off the coloring and the details I of course had to give her some jellyfish looking hair. This also echoes the elaborate hairstyles of Rococo and Marie Antoinette core. I gave her some cute glittery mermaid looking makeup and a lot of pearls and shells around just to echo the sea. And also as a reference to the sea, I gave her some fishnet stockings. And I also designed her corset belt to look kind of like ocean waves, sort of inspired by these porcelain corsets by the candy makeup artist. And finished it off with a very tiny tricorn hat with a little blue feather coming out of it. And of course, every pirate it needs a weapon. So with these, I tried to take the most iconic piratey weapons that I could find and then appoint them to the sea creature I think that they would match best. So I gave our jellyfish girl a cutlass and designed it to look a little bit like a seashell. With her elevated fashion sense, I kind of wonder if a rapier would have been a better choice, but I do like the design of it. In terms of characterization, I think that this character would be a little bit Steed Bonnet-esque, but different from Steed Bonnet, I think that she would be a wealthy, self-made woman and one day she just decided, hey, I, I want to be a pirate. And just as an added layer to the whole cursed by the sea premise, I sort of based why they were cursed on the seven deadly sins. I didn't fully commit to this idea and some of it definitely got lost during the character design process. But my basic concept behind them is that they were cursed by the sea because they were taking something from it. And the idea for Jellyfish Girl is that she sort of lost herself in the pursuit of fineries and more wealth. Maybe she's got like a darker past that she's trying to compensate for. Basically, the ocean is trying to teach them a lesson and they're all on redemption arcs. This would function a lot like Davy Jones' curse. They wouldn't be able to set foot on land at all, really. They gain more characteristics of the sea the longer they're cursed. And they can trade souls for their freedom, but there's probably some other lesson they need to learn that would also free them that they have to discover along the way. Ooh, excellent writing, I know. Uh, anyways, she's done now and I absolutely love her. Next up, we have the Japanese spider crab 
which was also the second hardest design for me to come up with. Apparently we're doing these in descending order today. I don't know exactly why this one was so difficult other than just trying to balance weird coloration and honestly a weird silhouette on the part of the spider crab. But I also think it had to do with the fact that I was quite inspired by the Japanese spider crab. The first time that I saw one in person was actually quite recently. It was back in November whenever I went to the aquarium in Gatlinburg and I saw this thing and I was like, oh my gosh, that that is a very large spider looking crab. And I took a lot of photos of it and videos of it. And I was like, yep. That's getting turned into a character. So the other reason for my struggling was probably like a lot of weighty expectations. So whenever I was determining the silhouette and the thumbnails, the main thing that I knew I wanted was I want this character to be lanky and leg focused because the crab itself is lanky and leg focused. So I wanted a design that would emphasize the legs, but then I also wanted to incorporate the crab legs into the design somehow as well. So the first sort of no brainer concept that I came up with was just using them as spines and a sort of jacket waistcoat because these kinds of waistcoats are very popular among pirate aesthetics and I wasn't really going for a waistcoat or a coat with tails for any of the other characters so I just felt like I needed someone to have this aesthetic because it is so popular amongst pirates and it's also one of the more vaguely historical garments that I could pull from for this video so I essentially went for like a weird jacket corset mix I've always loved the look of like a bodice or vest that is attached to a jacket that has like coattails and everything. So to bring a bunch of aspects of the sea creature into this design, I used the crab legs as spines to give some structure to the tails of the jacket and essentially did the same with the standing collar only on a slightly smaller scale. And because the British Navy and East India Company or whatever were so prevalent during the era of piracy, I did want to bring some of those more militaristic looking aspects into the design of this jacket, but then also sort of contrast that with some punk as Aesthetics. To be clear, these characters do not exist in our world on any level. I'm just pulling some aspects from history because, you know, pirates are based in history and our perception of clothing is sort of contextualized by how it was used throughout history. And since punk clothing to begin with sort of originated from people customizing their school uniforms and being rebellious by sort of setting themselves apart in that way, I think it would be interesting if this character was like an ex-naval officer that did the same thing thing with her old uniform. And all the little customizations she did have like vague punk aesthetics, but ones that are more appropriate for the fantasy setting. Instead of normal little spiky studs, I gave her studs on her collar and her hat that sort of look like the texture of a Japanese spider crab. And chains are also a very like goth punk scene emo thing. So I gave her little chains hanging off of her jacket in several places, but ones that are gold just to give it a little bit more elegance and then also match her weapons. For her weapons at first I was gonna give her like twin boarding axes but then I was like okay it's gonna make way more sense if they kind of look like actual crab claws. So I gave her two chain sickles tied together with a chain which I know is anime nonsense but this is the time and place for anime nonsense. I'm sure whatever crab powers she has will keep her from stabbing herself. Speaking of crab powers I really wanted to bring those beautiful red and orange stripes on the legs to the forefront of this design because they are magnificent. So what better way to reference crab legs than basically giving your character crab legs? So I gave her some very tight thigh-high boots that have that sort of marbled red and orange crab pattern on them. And this is sort of where I started to struggle the most with this design because at this point I had some pretty conflicting aesthetics going on. Because on one hand we had the very segmented organic look of the crab legs and the little crab spikes on her lapel and hat. And on the other hand I had a lot of very intricate gold details on her corset and on the little necklace that I gave her. And the shape language was just all given a little bit too much contrast. And speaking of contrast, I also gave her some very like 90s, early 2000s looking two-toned hair. So there was just a lot going on with the colors at this point. So it was basically at this point that I had the idea to add the chains and do a little bit of tweaking here and there with the color palette itself. Pro tip, gradients are like fantastic for balancing a design. If you're looking at something and you're just like, oh, this area isn't dark enough, but I also want to keep this general look, throw a gradient in there. The boots were looking a little bit too light. I 
through more of an orange gradient on the bottom and voila, it did wonders. The hat was too light, the sleeves were too light. No problem, throw a darker gradient on them, it balances the design beautifully. The little poof sleeves around her wrists are too dark, throw a lighter gradient on them. Just those few tweaks I feel like really balanced out the design and the other huge thing that I did that added I feel like so much to it was just making her eyes super super blue. I think it provides so much contrast for the rest of the design because it's so monotone and we are running out of time so quick backstory. This character used to be a naval officer but then she got fed up with it and she's like this sucks I'm going AWOL I'm leaving and the thing the sea curses her for is greed but you know how in like Full Metal Alchemist that greed is sort of like a good thing because it's good to want some things but it's just it's the wanting too much that's the problem. She wants more from life which is fine but then she ends up taking too much and sort of not becoming the best person along the way. And that's the lesson that this character needs to learn. And I have been talking for too long. Anyway, she's done. Next up, we have the saw shark, which I mean, scientists are just coming in clutch with the animal names as usual. This is another one where the first time I saw it was at that aquarium trip. And I, I didn't know that this animal existed until I saw it there. And I was like, oh, well, that's weird. I'm gonna put you in my pocket for safekeeping. You are also gonna become a character. And this design somehow how was probably the design that I struggled with the least. I, I don't know, maybe it's just because I've been designing a lot of things that have teeth all over them recently. But this one came together fairly easily with the exception of a lot of edits that I made in the second round with the actual illustration. But that is one reason why I'm sort of opting to do my older illustration style with these videos. I think it allows me to think about the design in a fresh way and make those necessary changes whenever I see something that I think will work better. So for this one, I really wanted to lean into some fun feminine pirate aesthetics, but give them a twist. So I of course started out with a very poofy peasant shirt, some classic thigh high boots. And I also gave her a really big hat that's modeled after a Spanish style that I'm pretty sure was pretty popular during the era of piracy. I don't actually know what it's called. And from there, that's where it just gets weird. The base of the look was modeled after this like weird half jacket that I found on Pinterest it's like pretty punk looking, but all of the ruffles also made me think it looked pretty piratey. So I basically took that concept and then adapted it to look a little bit sharkier, giving it lots of teeth all over it. And then also eventually giving it some red and blue swirls to be indicative of waves and blood in the water. Following that, I gave her another underlayer that's basically a waistcoat jacket with tails that I designed specifically to look like shark flesh. The way the lapel folds looks like shark fins, the way the tails are look like shark fins, and if that's not enough for ya, I also basically gave her a shark tail coming out the back of it. Was that too much? Probably. But I left it in because we are going for shark. And if you thought that wasn't enough shark fins in this design, I also gave her some some little gloves that have shark fins coming off the side of them. An alternate title for this video could be How Not To Be Subtle About An Aesthetic. Speaking of my total lack of subtlety, I also gave the gloves claws because why not? And to follow that up, I also gave the boots some teeth. Um, that's something that I have been known to do, and for good measure, you know what, I gave the hat teeth as well. I am joking quite a bit about the teeth, but they're such an important part of the aesthetic because this is a saw shark, so she needs to have teeth everywhere to look like a serrated blade. It makes sense. And speaking of serrated blades, whenever I was trying to figure out what kind of weapon to give her, I was originally going to go for a cutlass or maybe explosives, that also could have been fun, but you know what, I just settled on a giant anime sword with giant shark teeth on it. I love it. I think it pulls everything together beautifully. I would hate to find myself on the business side of this thing. And I kept the design of the blade fairly similar to the thumbnail with the exception of adding some red on the handle as well as a red stripe down the center just because I thought it would be fun to add blood into this design as a reference because sharks have that very unfortunate stereotype against them. A few other key things that I did change from the thumbnails, I made her course it red because again I think that pop of color really brings a lot to the design and as a secondary pop of color 
I added a lot of blue into this as well because it was just looking too flat and like charcoal gray. I wasn't really loving it. I think adding the swirly blue and red motif did a lot for making this design look more dynamic. And I also carried some of those colors into the hair and the face by making the hair a little bit more blue and by also giving her some fun blue eyeshadow and red eyeliner, complete with a very spooky, sharp set of teeth. Um, I don't know how those work, but they are there. I also completely forgot that I gave her gills. Yeah, she has gills too. And as for her backstory and characterization, I think that her sin would be based on wrath. Sorry to stereotype sharks a little bit here, but it works. I think in her pursuits of treasure, she just got a little bit too wrathful, too violent, a little bit too angry because other pirates were like beating her to scores and stuff like that. I think ultimately this character is just a brawler that needs to learn some calm energy. She's definitely just basically a meathead with a quick temper. She needs to discover her softer side. But with that, she is done and uh, there is nothing soft about this design. I don't imagine that hugging this character would be very comfortable. And finally, we have a childhood classic, perhaps a fish that haunted your nightmare after seeing a particular Pixar film, the anglerfish. This design was probably the one that actually came to me with the least resistance, just because it really didn't change that much from the thumbnail that I did. And I can't decide whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, because I do really, really like this design. I think that it's great. I do, however, think that I could have pushed it a little bit more in a couple of areas. I don't know, I think it reads well enough, but I think anglerfish comes more more through in the outfit than it does in the character itself. Anyways, with this one, I base the outfit a lot on shapes and textures because the anglerfish has a lot of interesting shapes and textures to it. It has these like beautiful translucent fins and then their coloration and the scales themselves are very interesting to me. And of course it has a spine with a light bulb at the end growing out of its head. There is just a lot going on here. So I tried to translate all of those ideas into some aspect of the design. So the first piece or pieces that in inspired this outfit were a combination of two images. The first one is just a girl with a white bob. I saw it and I was like, just the roundness of it and the coloration I just felt like fit this sea creature really well. And since the bob meant the neck would be a little bit more exposed, I was also very inspired by this very cool ruffly color that I found that sort of wraps around the shoulders and has ruffles on the shoulders as well. Ruffs and folds like this just immediately reminded me of the fins of the anglerfish. So I translated this color pretty closely closely for my version of the design. And the other thing that I was very inspired by for this character was all of these like beautiful pearl drapings that I kept seeing all over Pinterest. I've been seeing them for a while now and I've already kind of used them as inspiration in several other designs of mine, specifically my pearl character. So on this design, I wanted to pair a translucent color with like a pearl brigier essentially. Sort of my version of the seashell bra that is so popular with mermaids and sirens. And to me, pearls kind of tie into to the shape language of the anglerfish itself because they have the little light dangling off of their head. And the other fun thing I noticed in some of the references is whenever you catch their fins at the right angle, it looks like they have little almost fiber optic lights going up them that look a little bit like strings of pearls. So bringing all that together, I gave her a little pearl brigier that has lots of little strings of pearls draping around it and flowing down her torso. And to keep with the theme that I started with the translucent fabric around her collar and her shoulders. I also gave her a little translucent poofy sleeves. And these also have little drapey bits hanging down that are more so in the shape of an anglerfish's fins. I paired that with just some very basic black pants and some belts. And if you thought that we had enough references to fins in this design, apparently you were wrong because I based basically the rest of her design also around fins. I really like something to be on the legs in designs like this just to make things look a little bit more visually dynamic. And I had already done thigh high boots so many times. So you know what came back? We have more assless chaps. But this time I made them more of like an armor based version. I think it would be cool if she had some light leather armor on her legs for no particular reason because um, her torso is so exposed. It's for the aesthetic. So to make the armor bits look a little bit more interesting, I textured them to look like the scales of an anglerfish and also added fins down the side. I did the same by giving her some bracers and also adding a little pair of gloves. Just a tiny little dainty pair of gloves. I love it whenever you have anime characters and the glove only covers like half their hand. I don't know why, it's just funny to me. So I added it here. <laughs> Anyways, I think the armor adds a lot to the design. I really like it. I think it's a good way to incorporate some of the more 
more boring parts of an anglerfish without making it look too boring. So at this point, I wanted to round out the design a little bit more, and I thought it would be a good idea to give her something to cover up with a little bit because, you know, the ocean gets cold, you're constantly having water splashed on you. So I gave her a little brown capelet that's pretty simple to just add a little bit more to the silhouette of the design. And finally, a couple of the items that are probably the most important things in making her actually look like an anglerfish. I gave her a mask with teeth on it to look like an anglerfish that was inspired by this mask that I found on Pinterest, some very moody, almost dead looking eye makeup, and finally a fin themed tricorn hat with a little anglerfish spine coming out of it, and of course the little light dangling overhead. I think those two decisions did a lot for readability because they are such iconic parts of an anglerfish. And last, but not least, for their weapon I did end up giving them a rapier, and I'm kind of glad I did because I also ended up giving it sort of like a spine translucent fish fin theme, and I think it ended up looking like super cool. It almost looks like ice. Anyways, in terms of characterization and backstory, I think this character's sin would just be gluttony. I think that this character just really likes seafood and ale. They're almost like a little cat eating all the fish in the ocean. But more specifically, I think it would be cool if they liked to hunt down and eat rare delicacies, maybe like endangered fish species, and that's where the gluttonous behavior comes in. Just that overconsumption of finer things and just disrespect for the ocean. Uh, but with that, she's done. And here are all the finished designs. Like I said, I absolutely love them. I've really enjoyed working in my older art style again after starting the photo-driven character design series. I think it just produces way cooler illustrations at the end, and I am going to continue to up my quality with these character designs because they are just so much fun to do. Anyways, as always, if you have anything to add to this, um, maybe names, maybe backstories and personalities, take what I add as a grain of salt. I'm never able to like super flesh them out because I only have a week to work on these videos, but I always love reading what you guys have to add in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think of the more recent voiceover style. I have been doing basically all of the voiceovers since I started the photo-driven character design series just unscripted off the top of my dome, which of course makes for slightly longer voiceovers that maybe go into a couple of tangents, so. But let me know if you like the longer style, or would you prefer something a little bit more scripted and tighter? Let me know. Hello, and welcome to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I had honestly the most fun with these character designs that I've had like in a while. So thank you to all you lovely folks for placing your eyeballs on my video. But the biggest thank you, the one that shivers my timbers the most goes to my patrons, especially my executive producers. Zyle S. Shay Lee. Sable Skies, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Thea Maia, Ruled by Pluto, Agent Sketchy, Wolven Underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Cleos, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, Sushi McNushi, Satoni, Mel W, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Panda Pie 365, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. This is gonna be the new look for the 90s. You're gonna be the first pirate. <laughs> but I don't wanna be a pirate.